Good afternoon. I'm Pastor Bruce Adams of Lord's First United Methodist Church, or midweek blog. Welcome. And nice, pretty springtime weather. Wind's blowing a little bit. But anyway, we'd like for you to also uh, like us on Facebook. I have a few announcements for our congregation. And, and anybody else who's watching who might be interested in participating in these events with us. Um, we have this coming Sunday, <clears throat> the uh, Ranch Recovery uh, Choir is going to come out and sing and share some testimonies. That's this coming Sunday, the 25th of April. Also, we have here um, the, uh, okay, the next Sunday on May the 2nd, we have um, Logan Holt and Carrie, Nate King, and myself are going to be singing special music. And then on, um, that's a Sunday, May 2nd. And then um, on the May 1st, the young people in our church are going to be doing a car wash and serving hot dogs and baked goods to raise some funds to go on a camping trip this, this coming um, summer. And then on Mother's Day, uh, we'll be taking up the F Board Children Home Offering. On Mother's Day, we'll also be having a service of Holy Communion. And um, so... Uh, those are some things that are going on and very interesting happenings in our church and our community. So we would like to now open this uh, study on the uh, armor of God with some prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you this evening for the opportunity to share the word of God and the gospel message with others. And help us, dear God, as we study about the armor that is available to the Christian and the believer to help us in spiritual warfare and to find victory, dear God, and to lead other people to Jesus. So be with us, dear God, we pray, and let your Holy Spirit inspire us, and all is said and done, you will be given the glory and honor. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So what we're going to do is we're going to take and read this passage again here from Ephesians uh, chapter 6, verses 10 through 18, and from the New King James Version. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end, and with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. May God bless the reading of his holy word. The book of Ephesians was written by the Apostle Paul, to offer encouragement to the Ephesians and the other Christian communities in that area. And he wanted to offer them encouragement and encourage unity. And he wrote this passage not to steer up fear, but to encourage believers because God, of God's total provision for us, and we can stop feeling vulnerable to the enemy and start feeling equipped to contend with him. So we have here, I have something here um, to demonstrate with you, uh, one of my church members. Um, Miss Vivian Graham gave me something that I can use for a children's sermon, and it's a little belt. It's a little belt that resembles the, the belt that the Roman soldiers used to wear. It's called, the, and we call it the belt of truth in the armor of God. So one of the favorite, and if you can see it right here, I'll hold it up here. It's neat. I'm going to looking forward to doing a good children's sermon with this in a couple Sundays. Um, one of the devil's favorite weapons is lies. I mean, he's the father of all lies. He's a murderer from the very beginning, and he lied back in the Garden of Eden and tried to distort the truth. And so what, that's what he does. And it's, it's hard to distinguish sometimes the truth from um, fallacy. But Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And, and the gospel is the, and the, and the, and the Christian way is the true way. And so if we ask God, he will give us discernment, his Holy Spirit, and he'll give us the wisdom to know his truth above all the other clatter and noise that we encounter in this world, that we live in, in this fallen world. Next, we have the breastplate of righteousness. And I've got here a little breastplate, and I'm going to let one of our children try on when I do this children's sermon. But uh, the breastplate there uh, of righteousness, it protects the vital organs of a soldier, but also it protects our heart. And this righteousness 
You know, Satan tries to undermine our self-worth and, and question our place and our status and standing with God. And because of that, many people, and most of us at some point and another, have struggled with self-esteem, and we can easily fall prey to those tactics of the Satan, the wiles of the devil. But when we listen, we'll hear our Heavenly Father remind us of his unconditional love and our position in Christ. We are, Christ is our righteousness, and, and that, that is something that, we, that, that, they, that guards us, that breastplate. It's his heart and us, and our us abiding in his heart that helps us to know and understand that Christ, that Christ alone and his goodness and what he did on the cross, his sinless life and his resurrection imputes to us a righteousness if we will truly believe in what he did for us over 2,000 years ago. And then we have here, talking about the, um, the fitting the feet with uh, this armor here. I have it right here. They, they, they put over their sandals. Um, the enemy, I'll show this to you, the enemy wants to uh, keep the people of God quiet, so he wants us to shut us up. But what God wants us to do is he wants us to go out and spread the gospel, spread the gospel of peace, and speak very boldly and with strength. And um, this, this, this is to protect your feet so that you can travel and not be injured. Um, you know, in martial arts, one of the trick when you're, a trick when you're defending yourself is sometimes to step upon your enemy's uh, top of his foot and break the arch. Well, that's what the enemy wants to do. Satan wants to break our feet. He wants to cripple us. He wants us to, uh, to, to be afraid to speak or not have any confidence and boldness in proclaiming the gospel. But this is why we have this armor, the gospel of peace, to help us. And we have that message and we have that peace that passes all understanding in our heart and a certainty of the truth of God and what he wants us to do. And next in the army of God, we have the shield of faith. And here's the little shield right here. And it's going to be a lot of fun having uh, one of my children try that on the Sunday when I do the uh, children's sermon. But um, the devil's plan is to try to derail our faith. And, and he uses situations and sometimes other people. Uh, so our personal weaknesses can leave us open to temptations, discouragement, and wrong behavior. But when we admit our need for his help, God will make us tougher and make it help us make it through those trials. And that's what this shield does, the shield of faith. And then we have here the helmet of salvation. And uh, the struggle with Satan often starts in our thought life, you know, our head, okay? And many times we have some things um, we're holding on to in our head and our mind. But if we call on God, he will renew us so that our eyes and minds will stay focused on him throughout the day. And in Romans um, 1, uh, 12, 1 through 2, it tells us to be, uh, our, for our, calls for our minds to be transformed uh, and, and, and changed into the likeness of Christ. And uh, so that is something that protects us. And, you know, you, uh, you can't keep the birds from flying in the air, but you can keep them from building a nest in your head. And that's what this helmet, this here helmet of salvation does for us. Then we have next the sword of the Spirit right here. The, um, the enemy hopes to neutralize the power we have through Christ. He aims to confuse and intimidate or scare, scare us and hoping, hoping that we'll forget God's word. But we, if we seek him, God will fill us with the confidence to declare scripture and claim his promises for our lives. You see, the Bible is all the Bible. God's word is inspired by the Spirit. It's God-breathed. God and uh, it's something that, that we can use and read and read it with the enlightenment of the Holy Spirit to help us discern the things that we need to discern in this world, God's will for us, and to know what God's plan is in certain situations and for how does to interact with this world that we live in, this fallen world, and as we should live as redeemed creatures and children of God, sons and daughters of God. And um, so it's the, uh, it's, it's, it's the, I call the Bible the sword of the Lord and the sword of the Spirit. And certainly, I, I don't know about you, but I do know that over the years I found that I can read a verse or a passage of Scripture and God will reveal something by His Spirit and through His Spirit about that passage. And, but then several weeks later, you read it again and He'll show you something else. It's almost infinite, the things that God can bring to you and the messages that He can bring to you and, and help you in all the different situations and things that you're dealing with. And then finally, prayer. You know, we're to stand. We're told several times in this passage to stand. And the main way we stand is through prayer. Prayer is something that connects us with God. And, and Satan really wants to cut us off from our prayer life. 
He knows that without it, we are not lined up with God the way we should be. We become weak. Um, I, I, I saw a little church sign one time that said, one week without prayer actually makes one week, and it's true. So we need to, to stay in tune and touch with God in the morning, evening, and in, in the evening time, and in the noon time. He's always there. He can talk with us. He can walk with us and strengthen us and, 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 and let us know how much he loves us and that we are his child, that we are children of God. So we need to set aside time each day for fellowship with him and also be willing to be in touch with him in such a way that in different situations in life we can immediately tune in to him and talk with him and he talk with us and help us decide what to do and, and, and help us live our, our life in a victorious way. So that's what we have for you this evening about the armor of God and I hope it's helped you out and uh, looking forward to doing a blog each week to help us all kind of stay together during this time of the pandemic and as we hopefully are coming out of the pandemic. And uh, it's just really been good to be with you this afternoon. And thank you for listening. God bless you.